Coming up today, we have special guest Das Williams, County Supervisor for the Santa Barbara area. You do not want to miss this interview. Buckle up, everyone. You are strapped in and ready for the Insurance Hour with me, your host, Carl Sussman. Informing, educating, and entertaining Californians one policy at a time. This is Insurance Hour. Hello, hello. This is Carl Sussman, host at Insurance Hour. Thank you once again for being here. Remember, if you have any insurance-related questions, you can call anytime, 559-656-0317, or send an email to questions at insurancehour.com. Today, we have a very special guest. I'm excited to have him here, Das Williams, who is the supervisor in uh, Santa Barbara general area. I'm going to give you a quick bio without embarrassing him. We were talking about this and I said, you've done so many things. I could sit and do, you know, 10 minutes just on everything you've done. And, and he's, he said, don't do that. So let me just give you a little background on, on what he has accomplished. And then we'll just start chit chatting about some of the things he's doing that are, that are trying to help people in his territory be more prepared about, uh, prepared to get better insurance, to be able to prepare their homes for wildfire and things of that nature. So Das, and you correct me if I'm wrong on my data because hopefully I've got it all correct here. So starting out back at, San, at the um, Santa Barbara City Council back in the early 2000s, moving on to the 37th District for the California State Assembly, and then uh, currently serving as County Supervisor for Santa Barbara County Board of Supervisors. That's all right. right. Yeah. Okay, so, so so somebody did the research correctly for me. I don't look stupid. Well, you know, again, the reason I wanted to have you here is, uh, I mean, I, I'm a fan of Santa Barbara. I mean, I used to, you know, as a kid, go to Cabrillo Street and, and, and Carpinteria, and, and all those areas have always been favorites of mine. And so... Live in, I live in Carpenter. Oh, okay. So, so yeah. there, you, there you have it, right? And, and one of the first stations that the radio show came out on was KZSB, and we're still there right now. Hello, everybody at KZSB. We love you. And so when I when I when we're talking about insurance and I, I tend to deal, I'm a little California centric because I'm here, obviously, even though we talk about insurance nationally. But I wanted to talk to you about things that you have done and things that you're doing to help people in that area deal with the I hate to say the new reality, the, the reality of what we're looking at when it comes to climate change and how it's affecting water, <laughs> floods, water, fire, wildfire, everything surrounding it? Well, first of all, you know, uh, it is uh, obviously a correlation. Santa Barbara County is one of the two fastest warming counties on average temperature in the state and in the western um, uh, uh, seaboard. And <clears throat> uh, correlated with that, uh, according to the research of these two great uh, researchers out at UCSB has been increase in sundowner winds and fall sundowner winds are really uh, the fire weather uh, and of course fire leads to more danger in flooding and debris floods. Um, so uh, you know our basic uh, task is how do we get better at at response and how do we get um, uh, better infrastructure uh, for flood control, because we still have many creeks that do not have 100-year flood capacity in them. Uh, and so, uh, especially with um, uh, Montecito, uh, the big concern has been the firm maps and getting, you know, essentially the uh, the current version of the FEMA maps and, and how that affects insurance. And the good news is uh, the new maps are coming out soon and will reflect the changes in infrastructure that we've been able to do, including uh, the large debris basin at Randall Road uh, that we have been able to do. And give you an idea, you know, the largest basin that we had on that watershed was only 10,000 cubic, uh, you know, yards. Sure. It, it It's interesting to hear because every part of the country really is dealing with this, you know, the air quote, new normal, Right. Uh, those are two expressions I can't stand. I can't stand unprecedented. I'm so tired of hearing that. Can we have some precedented, right, at this point? And, and new norm. I mean, what, what is the new norm, right? I think we can all see 
literally with our with our own eyes and that that we are seeing weather that we have never seen before there's just there's no question about it right these most recent storms we saw in southern california i just sat and looked out the window for as i'm sure you did days and it's not a little downpour or pause it was just this deluge that just kept coming so i i think that to have someone that is that understands that as you clearly do and are taking proactive steps to try and help ready the community in every way possible to protect them these are all things that are going to benefit everybody it's going to benefit the community at large which is going to help property values all that other good stuff that we forget sometimes that really does matter right california is big on property and and your area has some of the most gorgeous air uh, some of the some of the best parts of california literally to live are right where you are. So these types of infrastructure upgrades that you're talking about and that you're working on and have done are, they, they almost fly under the radar. People don't realize that those things have a dramatic impact on their property values and what's going to be happening going forward as the insurance industry starts to get better regulations to be able to properly price according to risk versus, you know, the, the large, you know, uh, brush everybody with the same general uh, guidelines, which is what the what the laws require to some extent. Now, people that are going to be doing these things that we're that we're going to be talking about to make their homes, you know, less likely to burn and to do things to protect their homes and be prepared in case their storms are going to literally put money in their pocket because it's going to allow them to have better coverage, lower premiums, and all of that starts at the top. And 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 that's where you are. So I, I applaud you for first of all understanding and recognizing that yeah, this is a thing, right? Because a lot of a lot of folks just want to sort of bury their head in the sand and say, nah, it, it's it, it was cold the other day, you know, there's no global warming, you know, and, and you just you, you just kind of want to face palm, right? That, you know, that's, that's, that's one day. You can't, you can't look at that, right? You have to look. I think uh, I read somewhere last year was actually the hottest year recorded ever uh, for, for the whole planet. So it's, and not by a, a little bit, by a significant amount. So I think what's interesting is people that are in areas where they have folks that have the ability to facilitate changes to the to the building codes to the infrastructure to the planning and things like that and are forward thinking that get it those areas are going to be the best off as time goes by because they're going to be prepared for what i think is hard to argue against what i hate to say it the new normal is going to be now i know you recently had a town hall uh, October, I think it was, uh, just a few months ago. Can you tell us a little bit about what went on at that town hall and what your takeaway was and what you were hearing from folks? Well, f- first of all, we had a, a great number of residents um, coming out uh, uh, and expressing the obvious frustration that most people in high fire zones are uh, feeling everywhere across the state, which is that insurers are are are. Uh, you know, drop in them, uh, you know, discontinuing their insurance. Um, and uh, we were also uh, fortunate to have the insurance commissioner attend. And, uh, you know, his hope is that uh, the compromise that they that he and the um, governor achieved with the insurance industry would bring more places into an insurable state. Essentially, I would describe the deal as, as you know, we'll you know, that the, the state government will approve rate increases um, and that the insurance industry will cover uh, more areas in the difficult. Country. It's a great it's a great summary. It's the sustainable insurance strategy. And we, we talk about it quite a bit. And what what it's really doing is it's taking legislation that has been enforced since the 80s that prohibits underwriting, really. It, that's why I say guidelines that make the carriers literally have to live inside of a box this big, and it gives them the ability to look at all of these things. The things you're doing, the things you're advocating for, will actually make a difference. So a carrier can come in and say, oh, okay, this house looks good because it's done X, Y, and Z. This county, this area, this township has done things so we can underwrite based on that. So you're 100% right. I think that the the guidelines, that, and they're starting to roll out slowly now, are going to do what we need, which is bring carriers back to a place where they can actually underwrite. We, f- we forget that, you know, one, one house is different than the next. 
And as time goes by and people are becoming more proactive, right, with what they do to protect their homes, then they'll be able to have a lower premium versus, you know, the person that might be in an area that's not protected or they don't take preemptive actions to try and prevent certain types of losses that can be prevented, right? They're going to see higher premiums. So I'm, I, I would have loved to have been to the event, but I think you're, I, I th- I'm, I'm glad to hear that, that the, at least the, the understanding is that, look, we all recognize there's a problem. We all recognize we need a solution. And now we're actually starting to see that, you know, rolling out in small parts. As far as the industry goes, the people that I speak with in the insurance industry in general, uh, I think the best way to summarize it is with what one, one exec said, and I, I, can't, I won't tell you who, but he says, we see light at the end of the tunnel. We, we just hope it's not an oncoming train. Right. <laughs> and, and so it, it's sort of one of cautious optimism, right? Because right now we have a situation where we're close to 87% of insurers that were writing policies for property insurance in California five years ago are not. They've right. either literally gone out of business, they can't, they've lost so much money they have no money left, or they're in a position where they're restricting coverage because they're literally bleeding cash, right? The, the analogy is, you know, if you take $1,000 in, but for every 1000 you have to pay out 1200 that doesn't, that doesn't work very well. It doesn't last very long, right? It, it doesn't enable people to, it doesn't enable the carriers to stay in business to pay the claims. So, right. and being in that situation is not good. So it's not even just a matter of rate increases, but it's being able to have the carriers reward the homes, the communities, the safer for wildfire protection, which I'd love to hear your take on. I know you're, you're big, you, you, you love it like we do. It's going to reward people and communities for doing things to try and lower their exposure to wildfire. And by doing that, of course, more carriers will want those risks, right? It's, it's a supply and demand and a competition. If you're an insurance company, remember, they don't make money unless they write insurance, which is another funny one I always hear that, oh, the carriers, they just, they just, you know, they, they just stop because they want more money. Well, they can't make money unless they write policies. That's kind of the way insurance works. You write a policy and you, you, and you collect premium and, and you make money based on your, you know, how much you're paying out versus what you're collecting. So anyone that thinks that a carrier is just willy nilly not writing, just remember they're not making money if they're not writing insurance. It's, it's, it's sort of full stop. It's obviously hard for folks who have had to go into the unregulated market where prices are astronomical uh, for their for their insurance um, to grapple with it. Um, but what policymakers, I think, uh, uh, on of all ideological stripes are realizing is that it, it, there really isn't um, bad guys in <clears throat> the regulated market at this point. It's it's just that the regulated insurance pool, ha- their costs have gone up astronomically. Um, it's well documented the costs have gone up, and but the rate increases have lagged behind, and that makes it very very difficult for them to do business, which makes it difficult for my constituents to get insurance. And so you know I I think it, it will be better situation if we balance that out, and that we all allow as you mentioned people to benefit from if they if they if they harden their their home against wildfire if they are creating defensible space and we have great work uh, done in conjunction with the fire safe council and our fire departments um, uh, locally uh, to promote that um, but it, it really is going to be important for folks to take steps in their house and in their neighborhood to reduce wildfire risk you know uh, that is the that is the way forward. What's what the challenge here is now? It's a policy challenge. Is can we make the changes both in our own properties and um, society wide uh, to grapple with the the challenges of the new normal? Right. Um, I'm sorry, uh, I made you do the air quote thing now too. <laughs> you, you can't help it, right? <laughs> oh, I can't help it. I do. Uh, I do hate that phrase. Um, but, uh, you know, it, uh, it, and I'll give an example. One of the challenges is um, for the for the flood control, for county flood control, you know, we're a county um, of uh, the on the south county. It's about, half, you know, half the county, 200, 
215,000 people or so. And just for people that don't know, what, what county we're talking about? We're talking about Santa Barbara County, South Santa Barbara County. The, the flood control account for South Santa Barbara County is assessment on property taxes that's so small that we take in about two and a half million a year, you know, um, thereabouts. And uh, just the, the repair and cleanup from the storm a couple weeks ago, um, we, we think will be $5 million. Uh, and, uh, and the storm last year, um, what was uh, between streets and flood control, $77 million. And we haven't gotten uh, received FEMA reimbursement for that yet. So you can see that it is an unsustainable assessment, right? That we, we, we can't, uh, you know, keep on spending 10 years, 20 years worth of the account every year or every other year. Um, so, uh, you know, either we need to, to raise the, the assessment to be uh, current with the times, or we need to figure out other ways. Thus far, we've been lucky because of having federal disaster declarations to be able to do flood control work with great reimbursement. But we, we can't, we have to keep on looking at new ways because otherwise um, we're not going to uh, be able to armor uh, uh, and, and increase the capacity in such a way as to, as to uh, be in a safe place. Who, who would have thought that we, we were expecting this, you know, California is always about wildfire, wildfire. And now all of a sudden there's something new and that, that, sort of came out of the blue, right? That these these storms, these unbelievable storms, and I won't I, I won't use the names. They can't just call them storms anymore. But you know, they're you know the the I'll give you a hits the the R word. You know, it's the atmospheric uh, it's like they can't just call it rain anymore or a storm. It's this I'll say it atmospheric rainstorm and I heard pineapple, some other I mean they they they, they love these phrases, but at the end of the day you're right. You, you sound a little bit like a, a lot of the folks that I talk to in the industry where they're saying we can't spend what we anticipate to happen every 10 years, every year. It just financially doesn't work. We have to take a quick break. And when we come back, I want to talk a little bit more about uh, the Safer from Wildfire program and some of the things that you're doing to try and help folks that it, you know, get information about what they can do with home hardening. <music> California's insurance market can be challenging, but Sussman Insurance Agency knows the way. Trusted for two generations in home, auto, and personal insurance. Call 877-411-5200 or visit sussmaninsurance.com. Navigate with confidence. Hello, hello, and welcome back. This is Carl Sussman with Insurance Hour. Thanks for sticking around with us here with my special guest, Ash Williams. Before the break, we were chit-chatting a little bit about the uh, the new normal and and all these and these things that we have to get used to as being the, the the way things just will be going forward. And I wanted to talk a little bit more, and I wanted to give Das a chance to talk about the Safer from Wildfires program that I know was covered at, pretty heavily at the October event that the insurance commissioner also attended, and also get an idea for people that are that are with us now on what resources are you making available to help the average person find out what they can do to make their house safer, whether it be from wildfires or from water damage or anything like that? Well, the county uh, partners with the Fire Safe Council here locally uh, to have this information campaign and to give essentially technical assistance to residents that want to make their properties and homes more fire safe. And, you know, obviously some of the w work predates the program. I mean, we've been doing chipping programs in many of the high fire neighborhoods for some time. Uh, but um, this is uh, more granular, uh, i.e. that that people the you know, from the Fire Safe Council will come out and help you brainstorm what's going right on your property and what is not. Free of charge. So free of charge. So people can literally reach out and have an expert come to their home and say, here are things that you can do. That's right. And uh, we, we, we really encourage people uh, to contact our fire safe council. Um, that's our, that's our partner. And obviously our fire mar marshal 
uh, uh, Rob Hazard works with them extensively. Um, and, uh, you know, we have, uh, you know, good technical assistance in the fire department as well. If the fire safe council needs something, uh, that, uh, is beyond their, their, their level of expertise. Just to make things easier before I forget, why don't you give everyone your information? Because I want everyone to be able to have you sort of as a central person to go to since you have all of this. And we'll be sure to put it in the show notes as well. So where for if somebody wants to have somebody come out and do exactly what you're talking about, which, again, mind blowing for me. Right. Who wouldn't want to do that? Uh, right. The best claim is no claim for everybody. Right. That's what lowers our premiums and keeps, you know, damage. I mean, Claims mean lost. That means something bad has happened. So if you can have somebody that's an expert in helping you prevent a loss come out, I would say there is you, you should be jumping all over that. What's the, what are some good ways for people to reach you and you can help them sort of navigate who to reach out to? I, they can email me personally at dwilliams uh, at countyofsb.org. That's County of Santa Barbara, but we just do countyofsb.org. dwilliams at countyofsb.org. Dot org, and you know, uh, you know, some of these calls are not—they're not easy. They, they you know, uh, when the fire marshal makes recommendations in evacuation width, um, that's hard for residents. This is not easy stuff to adapt to uh, a greater uh, fire danger, but it's something that we have to do together as a society. Um, uh, you know, we want to be able to have relative uh, safety um, in our communities. Um, I'll tell you some other great program that we're working on is uh, we're going to go live with an integrated borderless dispatch of fire and EMS services in this county in a couple months. I, well, you need an acronym for that one. That, sure. that, would, that would be how many, <laughs> how many letters? <laughs> so let, let's just say that, you know, in some counties, they already dispatch resources together. But in other counties, each different fire district um, dispatches resources separately. And there's a lot of times when the closest available resource to you is not the one that's on your side of a border. And uh, so we're taking all of our fire districts and we, um, we in the county uh, uh, took the hit and, and, and built uh, the dispatch center. And um, we're now going to have an integrated uh, you know, uh, screen where people can see whether they're, what resources are available, what resources are already on a call and always get the closest available resource to you. And of course, that's enhanced by the fact that we have advanced life support um, paramedics on most, uh, you know, on, the, on, on a vast number of our engines. So all county engines, not all city engines, but all county engines are already uh, ALS certified. Um, and and that's important, too, because it means that you have a level of expertise on a fire engine um, that's equivalent to the level, level of expertise that folks would be having on an ambulance. That's interesting. So all of they're all ALS certified now in the county. Yes. We have one personnel on each on each, uh, on each engine. Wow. That's that's inc- that's incredible. That really is. And, and, and for people that aren't familiar with, with what that means, um, I suggest you go and do some research because to be able to have that type of expertise on every fire truck and have that level of access is tremendous. Right. You know, you buy a house and they list the school districts and all these different things. And I'm, and I'm thinking, Wow, this would be a, something buried in the lead too, right? That that this this type of protection is available with this level of expertise in the county. That that's a big deal. That's a really big deal. When, when is that something new, or is that something that you put together over time? It's something that the department has prepared for over years. But this move towards borderless dispatch has ha- happened under my watch. Um, uh, I don't. I'm not exclusively responsible for it my uh, colleagues on the board of super come on come on i'm i'm throwing you a, i'm throwing you a softball <laughs> <laughs> but um but um i have uh been a part of that movement for some time i i've advocated that um statewide we need to look at um uh you know fire departments having a stronger role in uh the the health side of response um, uh, you know, uh, be, because 
we want to understand weaknesses in our, our ambulance response and strengths. Um, and and uh, the, I've advocated that departments uh, have more ALS certified personnel uh, so that it, if, if necessary, the fire department can um, function in the role of, a, of an ambulance service provider. Um, you know, in some places it really, you know, may make sense. Um, so, uh, you know, uh, that this is, you know, not a desire to restart the ambulance wars, but it is a desire to really get to uh, a better response and to understanding that our regulatory environment is about average responses. And there may be pockets in a community that does not have that uh, uh, a high of, of a response and wanting to, to improve that. Ambulance wars. Yeah, I, it's uh, you forget that sometimes there's money involved in this, right? It's, it's not just about uh, who can get there first and who can provide the best service. It's and then there's the issue of where do you take people? Right. And you have the hospital wars and, 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 and all of that. It's 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 unfortunate. But you know what? The the as unfortunate as that is that we have that aspect to deal with. The good news is that we have some of the best response times anywhere. That's right. And and so we are very fortunate on that, but it's also, you know, there's things that we could do to um, not make everything as high cost. You know, Uh, I, you know, I, I firmly believe that with health transfers, in many cases, you could do that with uh, basic life support personnel um, and not have to dispatch an ambulance every time, you know, uh, the idea that we need to have an ambulance to take people in assisted care to their health appointments you know, maybe that's that. Maybe that's a, a a place in the system where we're where we're not being efficient. Uh, uh, you know, and 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 so you know, I think tiered response is also something that we need to be doing in in a, 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 a EMS or ambulance service. You know, is make sure making sure that that the most important um, health emergencies are responded to with 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 basically everything you know, throw, the, throw everything at that. Um, but that, you know, health appointments, maybe we can do that with, uh, with a car, with some basic, basic, uh, equipment and, uh, a BLS certified person. You know, Des, I, we, we, we got to wrap up, but I have to just tell you, I, I'm so impressed with your level of knowledge and just the fact that you are so involved on such a granular level with all of these things. A lot of times when I'm speaking to people that are in elected office, it's much more of a general view of what's going on. You're, you're giving me specific roads and, and, you know, areas of, uh, that have been damaged by flood waters and cleanup and, and this, the level of specificity that you have is very impressive to me, truly, and and I'm, I'm not just I'm not just saying that. So, Thanks, Carl. I, I I think that the the folks that your constituents should be very very happy to know that they have someone that really is hands on, getting their hands dirty or wet or whatever the case may be, right? Uh, to to try and keep everybody you know in as good a position as possible. So I, I invite you to keep having those uh, those gatherings as well. You're going to always be getting good feedback from from people that and you know what they're dealing with. And hopefully as the insurance market starts to turn, we'll be in a better position for you to not have to say, I know it's terrible and here's you know here's all that's available, but it'll be more shifting to I know it's really terrible. Things are getting a little better. Try this and you might be able to have a better outcome or try that and you might have a better outcome. Is there anything that I haven't touched on that you want to be sure that everyone's aware of that, that you're focused on? Well, just, just that, that, you know, uh, we, uh, I think that, that people need to understand that there is a, a limited budgetary capacity of most public agencies. Um, you know, they can't, take responsibility. Most, m- most counties, though we, we clean out our creeks, most counties do not clean out private creeks. Um, you know, and we only do it when we think that there's going to be an impediment um, to flood control. So we, it's really a partnership between private owners and, and government at this point, just because of the, that, that really most governments have to budget for the big stuff, like debris basins, stuff that we know will work um, and and the cleanup and alterations of those basins to make sure uh, that they're retaining rock and, and tree uh, and letting water uh, go down downstream. 
And so, you know, uh, I, I think it's just important to rem- remember that this is a partnership. Um, uh, local flood control agencies, especially Santa Barbara's, is going to be there for you. Um, uh, but w- we, we have to figure out how to do this together. And an ounce of prevention, right? It's good to know that they will be there in the event that they have to do cleanup. But in the meantime, if we can all work together to try and make that potential, you know, clogging and, and debris mess less by, you know, a plethora of things from keeping the trees trimmed to the defensible space to all these other things that go on, uh, we'll make everybody's life easier, right? It means less work for them, means less budget spent, means more money for other factors. And to remember... This is not, doesn't carry as much water as this. So wide banks in your stream is really what you want to, pr- to promote. And, and a lot of people go, well, then that, I might lose a little bit of property along the creek side. You know, if you have a gradual wide bank, that property is going to be usable all the way down to the middle of the, of the creek instead of this channelized sort of li- sort of using your creek just sort of as a, storm drain. Uh, you know, we, we can accommodate much more flow and it slow down much more flow with wider banks in the creeks. And so we're really uh, uh, integrating that with our flood control master plan and hope other communities can do it too, uh, because we can have better flood control if we work together. Absolutely. Das, thank you so much again for being here. If you can give us your contact info again, website, email, phone, whatever for folks to reach you, uh, Let's do it. Let's be sure they can find you. Great. D. Williams at countyofsb.org. Again, that's D W I L L I A M S at countyofsb.org. Terrific. And if anybody forgets or they, they know, hey, Carl had that guy on from Santa Barbara. You can always ask me. I will get you to him. And you can, of course, you can reach us anytime, 559 656 0317 or questions at insurancehour.com. Das, thank you so much. And I look forward to uh, I look forward to meeting you in person. I always forget that this is such a strange medium we work in, right? We're, we're talking, have we met? I don't know. Does this count as meeting? Somebody started saying that this is an e-meeting. It's, an it's, e-meeting. it's nice to e-meet well, you. And, nice oh. to e-meet you, Carl. It's an honor to be on the show. <laughs> and uh, I, uh, let's keep on uh, educating people about insurance and about public safety. You got it. Thanks so much. I do want to thank all of you for taking the time to listen today. I know insurance is not necessarily the most sexy concept. It's not the most exciting thing in the world. It is important that you understand what it is you're getting, what you should be looking for, red flags, you name it. You just need to know more than you used to. Things are more complicated than they used to be. If you have any questions, please reach out to me directly. You can email your questions to questions at insurancehour.com or call and leave a voicemail at 559 656-0317. Educating and entertaining Californians one insurance policy at a time. This is Insurance Hour. This show is dedicated to Shamrock Papa.